Do you know what a real asset is? Well, it's a physical asset that has real underlying value based on what it can do or be used for. These assets are often more stable than financial assets like stocks. And when inflation is high, these real assets tend to outperform the financial assets. Today, we're going to be exploring five real assets that might be the perfect source for passive cash flows in 2023. Also, this video is sponsored by Fundrise, but more on that later. So there's three types of assets out there. You have real assets, you have financial assets, and then you have intangible assets. Let's cover the differences. Well, most of us are familiar with financial assets, a liquid asset that derives value from underlying ownership in something else. In the case of stocks, this would be a real company. However, financial assets include stocks, bonds, ETFs, and even good old cash. Now, intangible assets, on the other hand, have what's called a non-physical value. An example of this could be a company's brand recognition a patent or a copyright. So yes, there's certainly value there, but you just can't really put your finger on it. And then real assets have physical form in reality, this particular reality, not a metaverse or anything like that, because these are real tangible things in this real world. Some examples of this include buildings as well as oil and even livestock. However, it's important to understand that not all real assets are a source of cash flow. Something like gold is certainly a real asset, but it's a non-yield bearing asset. So you're not going to make any money while you own it. The only way to make money is to sell it for a higher price later on. So instead, we're going to be focusing on five real assets that cash flow. Let's jump into number five now. So the first real asset we're going to cover is Timberland. Let's start by defining what it actually is. Well, investing in timberland means investing in land that produces timber, also known as lumber or good old fashioned wood. And with this type of investment, you're looking to benefit from the overall increase in demand for lumber that is expected over time as society grows. For example, when lumber prices skyrocketed in 2021, timberland investors cashed in. However, this commodity or raw material is susceptible to boom and bust cycles, just like we saw in 2021. That being said, in the long run, we are simply not going to stop building things. The long-term demand for lumber should remain high. When you invest in timberland, you can make money in two different ways. Number one, you can cut down and sell the actual timber on your land, or of course, rent it out to a logger. And then number two, the land itself has value, and that value is likely to go up over time. So a popular strategy among timberland investors is to buy timberland in the outskirts of booming areas with the goal of cutting down that timber, selling it to a logging company, and then selling that cleared land to a developer for a hefty profit. The next real asset on our list is equipment. And these are tools designed for a specific purpose. On a small scale, this could be something like a lawnmower. And on a big scale, this could be something like a Caterpillar dump truck. Well, here's the thing. Millions of pieces of equipment all over the world are simply rented. And there's an owner out there who's earning a rent check every single month, many of which are in a passive manner. For example, in my hometown of upstate New York, we have Casale Rental. This company rents out tools and equipment large and small. For example, here's a 13 foot scissor lift that's being offered for rent at $145 per day. Well, what does a piece of equipment like this actually cost? This particular scissor lift is going to cost you around $15,000 gently used. So let's say, for example, you bought one yourself and then rented it out. Well, if you simply rented this out for five days a month, which would be 17% utilization, which is extremely low, you'd be making seven. $725 per month from that one equipment rental. Think about that for a second. $8,700 generated in one year from a $15,000 investment. That right there is a cash on cash return of 58%. However, to be fair, we're not factoring in repairs, maintenance, transportation, insurance, and many other important factors. Equipment can be a fantastic real asset to own, and then renting it out can be a great business in and of itself. Hey guys, before we cover the next real asset, I recently found out that about 89% of my viewers on this channel are currently not subscribed 
to the YouTube channel. That makes me really sad. So if you could take two seconds and subscribe, hit that bell, and then click on all notifications so you don't miss a single video. Guys, that would honestly make my day. So thank you so much. So here's a question. What natural resources are you allowed to legally own in the United States? To answer this question, I ended up on the U.S. Department of Natural Resources Revenue Data. Private individuals and corporations are allowed to own both land and the oil, gas, coal, and other minerals found below the surface. Fun fact, water resources like groundwater or springs can also be privately owned too. But how would you go about actually investing in a natural resource? Let's go ahead and cover an example looking at oil. You'd be looking to make a direct investment investment into an oil well. And this would most likely be accomplished through a private placement where you would make a direct investment into an oil drilling project. And while you can certainly invest in oil through things like stocks, ETFs, and even futures, keep in mind that these are not real assets. These are financial assets. If you're looking for real, tangible oil investments, be sure to check out the great states of Texas, North Dakota, and New Mexico, as most of the oil reserves are here. Next up on the list, perhaps the most well-known real asset of all time, none other than real estate. The value is clear. It provides to you or someone you rent to a physical shelter. Unlike a stock, you can go out and physically find real estate in the real world and even make improvements to it, which often increases the value. However, in order to buy something like a rental property today, you're going to need about $50,000 and a stellar credit score. Not to mention mortgage rates being as high as they are now have raised the bar even higher for getting into something like a rental. Well, today's video sponsor could be the perfect solution for getting exposure to real estate within your investment portfolio. Fundrise provides investors with simple access to alternative investments through cutting edge financial technologies. And right now, the demand for real assets is surging. And this is spilling over into the alternative investments realm because many alternative investments are real assets themselves. However, in the past, it's been difficult for average retail investors to gain exposure to this alternative investment category. Well, with Fundrise, the sign-up process takes minutes and there's no middleman. So the fees are often lower than other alternative investment options out there. So if you want to utilize Fundrise's industry-leading fintech platform, be sure to visit fundrise.com slash Ryan Scribner or use the sponsored link in the description below. So finally, we have Farmland, the literal backbone of the United States of America. With this type of investment, you're able to make money in at least two different ways. Number one, you can rent the land out to a farmer, or you might decide to cultivate the land yourself and grow something. Then of course, you could sell that product to generate income. And then the second means of making money with farmland is that the land itself tends to go up in value over time, just like with timberland and other types of real estate. And increasingly, farmland is being bought out by investors who then rent that land back out to the farmers instead of owner-operated farmland investors. For example, Bill Gates owns more farmland in the United States than any other person or entity out there. He owns a total of 242,000 acres of arable land worth around $690 million. So maybe consider investing in the green stuff yourself. Mark Twain put it best when he said, buy land, they're not making it anymore. So a common thread among assets on this list has been what you can do with land. You can build structures on it, allowing you to rent those structures out to other people. You could sell the resources that are already on the land, for example, timberland. Or you could grow food on your very own land or simply rent it out to a farmer. This makes land truly the ultimate real asset. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell for future notifications as I have an upcoming video about five steps to make your portfolio inflation proof in 2023 that you don't want to miss. Once again, if you're looking to invest in alternative assets, be sure to check out Fundrise via the sponsored link down below. Thanks so much for tuning in. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.